Being a sequel to Halo Reach, in terms of gameplay at least, Halo 4 continued and expanded upon the armor abilities that Reach introduced. One notable exception among this list is Sprint, this time being a default gameplay element rather than an ability. Lore-wise, it was explained that Gen 2 Mjolnir directly integrated a Sprint module into the armor to allow Spartans to move at faster speeds by overriding safety protocols. In other words, while we simply see a Spartan running, in-universe this would allow the Spartan to run much, much faster than normal. Of course, this information came from a pre-release website that had several pieces of information that were later retconned, such as Sarah Palmer being a 10-year veteran lieutenant before joining the Spartan 4 program, rather than a Lance Corporal who was recently promoted with intentions to fast-track her to Sergeant, so... yeah. The original Sarah Palmer backstory was kind of actually interesting, then Halo Initiation came along. But I digress. Today we dive into the armor abilities included in Halo 4 and the lore behind them, along with a brief look at the tactical packages and support upgrades, the additional armor mods available to Spartan 4s in the final edition of the Halo 4 Armory, and the conclusion to this series for the time being. Let's dive in. The Type 3 Refraction Dissonance Modifier slash Camouflage, aka Active Camo, is a Covenant piece of equipment manufactured by the Sanghelios-based Merchants of Keycost. Attached to the base of the spine, like most other armor abilities, this plug-in module bends light around the user, making them nearly invisible. A brief shimmer from the disfracted light is all that visually alerts others to the user's presence. The camo unit can also generate false radar signatures to confuse enemies, but this instantly alerts said enemies to a user's presence in a given area. Active camo technology dates back to even before the founding of the Covenant, with both Sanghili and Sanshayum having experimented with various forms of the tech. Though later advancements would take advantage of some reverse-engineered Forerunner technology, the Covenant version of this traditional baffler tech represents a distinctive branch from the Forerunner variation. With advances in technology thanks to extensive research by the Office of Naval Intelligence, UNSC armor and BDUs, though most notably Mjolnir, can interface directly with this Covenant tech. The Z-2500 Automated Protection Drone, or Auto Sentry, is a piece of Forerunner technology. A module that can attach to the armor system materializes a sentry drone from hard light. Primarily used by Promethean Knights, this little drone can provide support and protection during combat and outperform similar devices of UNSC make. After first being encountered on Requiem, the Auto Sentry became a regular tool used by Spartan 4s in both simulated fights and during Spartan operations, such as the second Requiem campaign in February 2558. The Z-90 Photonic Coalescence Emitter slash Aegis, also known as the Hardlight Shield, is another AA of Forerunner origin. Though we would only see widespread use in the UNSC after encounters with Prometheans on Requiem, Similar shield technology was encountered during the Battle of Drathius V in 2554. After the Promethean Awakening, hard light shields would see common use by Promethean enemies and Spartan operators. The hard light shield works by fusing photons into a dissipative barrier. Once activated, the shield will block most incoming fire for a time. However, it will dissipate after a period of time, or if too much damage is taken, not unlike Mjolnir shields, after which the shield module will need to recharge. During gameplay, it doesn't seem to allow energy shields to recharge when the hard light shield is active, though if this is just for gameplay or something canon, remains unknown. We next have the Type 27 Responsive Holographic Form Emitter, aka the T27 Decoy Package or Hologram. Reverse engineered from a similar piece of Covenant technology, this device can create a near-perfect holographic copy of the user which will walk forward and draw attention. The hologram will dissipate if shot at, if it reaches its limited 10 second lifespan, or if the user deploys a new hologram before the previous hologram dissipates. The hologram is good at fooling most eyes, but thermal enhancement can reveal the decoy as a fake. This module saw extensive use by skirmishers during the Covenant War, but doesn't seem to see much use outside of Spartan operations in the post-war era. Halo 4's jetpack is the Series 12 Single Operator Life Apparatus, a Lethbridge industrial jump jetpack designed with Spartan 4 operators in mind. A successor to Halo Reach's Series 8 jetpack, the Series 12 connects to a user's armor via gravity mitigation harness link. Three directional thrusters allow a user, be those unaugmented troops or Spartans, to maneuver through the air. 
Even with newer variations of Mjolnir featuring integrated thrusters, the jetpack can still find use for additional power and maneuvering capabilities. The Z5080 short-range Spectrum Augmenter slash Vision, aka Promethean Vision, is a Forerunner-made, full-spectrum vision enhancement system. Exactly how this module makes enemies visible through solid objects is unclear, but the technology has been adapted for use in conjunction with Visor 4.0 in Mjolnir Gen 2. The technical advantage provided has been cited as a source of many victories for the UNSC on Requiem. While the module has no problem seeing camouflaged units in the field, during wargame simulations, active camo can make the user appear blue, thus harder to see. Further, a support upgrade was developed to let Spartans hide from Promethean Vision, which would indicate that the UNSC has some basic understanding of the underlying operations of this Forerunner technology. The M2705 Regenerative Kinetic Dispersal Field, or Regeneration Field, is an armor plugin developed by Acheron Security. Its origins heavily classified by Oni, the design and function of the module points to a Forerunner origin, with the module sharing its design with the Hard Light Shield and Promethean Vision. Plus, there's the similar use of a green healing field like we saw with the Halo 3 Regenerator, itself clearly Forerunner in origin. When activated, a burst of shunting energy accompanies the green regeneration field, forcing friend or foe designated enemies back and even redirecting rockets in some instances. Within the field, an individual's combat viability is restored and energy shields can be regenerated. However, moving closer to the center of the field causes one's vision to distort. Our final armor ability is the M805X Forward Acceleration System slash Fulcrum Mitigating, aka the Thruster Pack, another Lethbridge Industrial creation. A trio of thrusters can rapidly accelerate a user in any direction along a horizontal plane without need for a pivot point or leveraging fulcrum. This can be used to rapidly close the gap with an enemy, evade an attack, move quickly into cover, among other potential uses. Despite its widespread use among Spartans, the X in the designation would seem to indicate that the module is still experimental on some level. Lethbridge Industrial would go on to develop the Anubis-class Mjolnir armor as a technological successor to the M805X thruster pack. However, with the full integration of thrusters into Gen 2 Mjolnir later in 2558, Anubis would be retooled as a limited production model. And that wraps up the armor abilities themselves, bringing us to tactical packages and support upgrades. These armor mods further enhance Mjolnir capability in the post-war era, providing additional performance boosts. We'll spend less time on each individual one as there's rarely more to talk about than the base description, but there are some implications here and there about Mjolnir technology in the Gen 2 platform that I may spend some time on where appropriate. We'll start out with tactical packages, software updates that can increase a Spartan's combat readiness and responsiveness. AA Efficiency By disabling shortwave system regulators, more power can be generated to recharge armor abilities faster. This package is favored by Spartans who are involved in asymmetric engagement roles as an ad hoc combat modifier, which provides a short-term advantage. Fast Track This one is definitely one of the weirder ones since, while in-game it just lets a player rank up faster, there is a more fleshed out in-universe application. By installing a modular evaluation device in the armor, Fast Track allows the user to gather and analyze more experiential data from every combat encounter they have. This package thus impacts the user's ability to advance in rank, shortening the time between promotions. Effectively, it allows an increase in experience gain. That 343 actually found a way to make gaining experience make sense in-universe still boggles my mind. The last line of the description kinda breaks the fourth wall for me, but the idea of Spartans being able to gather more data during combat situations would be invaluable not just for technicians and further development, but could be used to further enhance a Spartan's armor to be more in sync with the user, sort of like the long way to getting the benefits of partnering with an AI. Better performance opens more doors for promotion and advancement. Of course, I can't help but wonder why this wouldn't be a default for all of Mjolnir, as certainly more data would only help lead to better and quicker developments. However, I think the fact that we can only use one tactical package and one support upgrade in Halo 4 is likely indicating that this is true in-universe as well. Essentially, Mjolnir only has the capacity of running one of these software updates at a time for whatever reason. Could be a processing thing, could be power, could be something else. Still, I think that's probably the case. Firepower 
By alternating redundant magnetic streams on the back of the Gen 2 armor, this package can override regulated loadout limitations and allow a Spartan to carry two primary weapons simultaneously. This package is considered imperative for Spartans who prefer longer ranged or heavier firepower over close range speed and versatility. This is another one that kind of pushes the limits of believability, as it's hard to imagine why the UNSC would have a regulated limitation on loadouts, say for heavy ordnance. But I could imagine a couple reasons for such a thing. The big thing is the alternating redundant magnetic streams, which seems like it would use additional power to activate redundancies that might normally be saved for emergency situations, allowing for more hardware to be carried on the back. Grenadier. This restructures the standard magnetic hardpoints on the user's suit system, effectively increasing the total grenade capacity for all personnel. The package affects both domestic and exotic grenades, including Covenant and Forerunner ones, per compatibility regulations. Mobility. This modifies and bypasses muscle control actuators, allowing Spartans to achieve high-intensity mobility without severely damaging their bodies. This allows users to gain unprecedented sprinting stamina at their own discretion. Resistor is an odd one. Being the one tactical package that was included with the Champions Bundle DLC, it didn't come with any attached lore. In-game, it allows a player to maintain their full mobility and dexterity when taking incoming fire. If you'll recall, in Halo 4, being fired upon slows your sprinting down. If I were to imagine up some lore, we'd first have to imagine what causes a Spartan to slow down in the first place. Is it a natural reaction expressed as gameplay, or is it a safety feature of some kind? In the former case, I could see this package pushing the armor to override the user's instincts. If the latter, it would probably override the aforementioned safety feature. Ultimately though, it's hard to speculate beyond these options. Resupply. Allows Spartans to recover grenades from the armor of dead soldiers by means of a software patch to the suit's magnetic hardpoint configuration. Equipment recovery personnel and post-combat recon teams deployed in enemy-held locations, where acquiring material from allies and foes alike is a necessity, tend to use this package. This is another odd one, as it took what was once a default feature of Halo and made it into an optional feature that players could select. My guess is, from a lore point of view, this would somehow modify the magnetic hardpoints on Mjolnir to... sort of... automatically recover grenades from fallen comrades, like they just... magnetically fly up to the user or something, I don't know. It's hard and weird to imagine this one in-universe, I won't lie. Requisition. This installs a hardline channel system, allowing a Spartan to request alternative selections of tools or weapons during ordnance drops. This package is very useful when it comes to ordnance versatility, by offering more choices on the battlefield. Shielding. This reinforces energy shield emitters by means of a modified bypass of standard performance regulators, allowing a higher shield recharge rate after taking damage. And finally, Wheelman. This mod connects the user to machine control systems via a cross-networked driver component fixed to the suit's frame. This improves the long durability of any vehicle in combat and mitigates some of the effective effects of an EMP discharge. So, mitigating EMPs I can kind of understand. Mjolnir connects in some manner directly to the vehicle, so perhaps it can sort of jolt an emp system back into action with its own power supply, but how it would make a vehicle more durable is beyond me. If it isn't obvious by now, these packages and upgrades can be weird to imagine in-universe, certainly a downside to the everything is canon route that I generally enjoy, even for the occasional oddities. But from there, we move on to our final topic for today, support upgrades. In contrast to tactical packages, support upgrades enhance a Spartan's combat performance, as opposed to readiness and responsiveness. A lot of these are fairly straightforward, so not a ton to comment on individually. Ammo. By overriding the capacity and safety protocols of the Gen 2 armor, Spartans can exceed normal ammunition carrying parameters. The upgrade is recommended for CQB roles and encounters which require excessive ammo usage. Awareness. This facilitates minor adjustments in the Mjolnir's HUD-distributed display mechanics, allowing the integration of a motion sensor into a scoped weapon, native of exotic smart links. Thus, it provides a Spartan with basic motion sensor data while sighting an enemy. This upgrade is often relied on by Spartans who engage in sniper operations or long-range combat. Dexterity. Circumventing overlock and mobility systems, this temporarily bypasses fine control movement governors to obtain quicker reloading times and weapon swapping. 
Upgrades which enhance movement have increased in popularity for operations with intense close quarters firefights, which demand swift action versatility. I've talked before about how Mjolnir doesn't just enhance the Spartan's movements, but in many ways, moves the user. Dexterity, it sounds like, takes advantage of this feature to even further enhance a Spartan's already impressive dexterity. Drop Recon This upgrade is enabled by suborbital drone-linked monitoring systems, which are embedded in a user's Mjolnir support unit. Explosives by manipulating energy placement differential systems, armor software can automatically transfer concussive force from explosives sustained during combat. When used with Mjolnir Gen 2, it passively disperses received energy, allowing a Spartan to take less damage while increasing damage for targets. I'll be honest, while I can kinda see how it might mitigate concussive force from grenades, I have no idea how this upgrade is supposed to use software to make grenades deadlier. That one's a little weird. Gunner. This improves a variety of elements which favor heavy weapon specialists. This is allowed by software improvements in the suit's automated weapon communication nodes. So, what you don't get from this description is what the upgrade actually does in-game, which is increase the time a turret can be fired before it overheats, and letting a player move around faster with a detached turret. The latter makes sense enough, though I question how much a turret would actually slow a Spartan down, obviously nothing like we see in the games, but the increasing of time before a turret overheats is a bit more of a mystery. One could potentially assume that the turret overheat is a gameplay version of some built-in safety feature that prevents a gun from sustaining fire too long, lest it be damaged. If that were the case, then, presumably, Mjolnir interfacing with the turret systems when a Spartan handles it could, perhaps, override this safety feature to a limited degree. But that's my over-analyzing headcanon. Nemesis is a balance mitigation module that is obviously impractical in real operations and is exclusive to wargame simulations. It does, however, increase tension for targeted participants. So here we can see that at least one support upgrade that's literally only used in wargames. One can't help but wonder if some of the other upgrades and tactical packages might, to one degree or another, be similar. Ordnance Priority this allows access to a Class D4803 priority channel with UNSC Infinity, thanks to a software patch which allows dialing couplers and satellite linkage, allowing a user to call in ordnance more often. The upgrade is often utilized by Spartans during requisition-dense, support-heavy combat in situations where the deployment of ordnance can be intermittent and scarce. What's funny about this one is that I don't think there are any Spartan Ops missions where personal ordnance is featured, so in-game, it is war games only. And yet, the description all but confirms that this is used in theater. It's kinda sad now, looking back, that Spartan Ops never tried to integrate personal ordnance and make use of this support upgrade. Assuming I'm remembering correctly, of course. Recharge is the first support upgrade from the Champions Bundle DLC. In-game, it decreases the time it takes for a player's shields to recharge. One could easily assume that it works similar to the AA Efficiency Tactical Package, disabling some normal limiters or regulators to, in this case, decrease the time it takes for shields to recharge. And note the difference there, shielding increases recharge rate, while recharge decreases the time it takes for the shields to start recharging. Sensor. This upgrade violates general UNSC transmission regulations. It is utilized by stealth operatives and infiltration specialists to provide heightened location intelligence of all nearby enemies. Or, in-game, it increases the radar range. Presumably, this increased range makes detection more likely, hence why it quote-unquote violates transmission regulations. Stability. This upgrade functions by alternating the suit's default kinetic dampeners. Spartans who participate in lateral combat maneuvers through environments which are notably dense favor this upgrade. Stealth. A largely nominal software upgrade that decreases user movement noise and visibility on certain visor enhancement systems. This is the one that makes you harder to see on Promethean Vision, incidentally. Finally, though, we have Survivor, the second of the Champions Bundle upgrades and the one that's probably the hardest to assign an in-universe explanation. For those who may have forgot, this kicks a Spartan out of a vehicle that's about to explode. Now, if we're talking strictly about vehicles like Warthogs or Ghosts, vehicles with an open cockpit design, I could see this upgrade using a direct connection to the vehicle to monitor its status. If it detects that the vehicle is likely to break down or explode as it would in-game, 
Perhaps it overrides the armor and moves on its own, getting the Spartan out of a deadly situation in the nick of time. Something with a sealed cockpit, though, like a Mantis, is harder to imagine a good explanation for. But if 343 decided this were to be another War Games only upgrade, that would make more sense since they can do some wacky stuff with simulations as needed. But with that, we conclude the Halo 4 Armory series. It has been a blast to put these together, getting to focus on lore I might not otherwise be able to talk about in a normal video. There is a ton of cool lore out there that only appears in brief descriptions like these, and implications you can only get by reading between the lines. One of my favorite examples to this day is the Armor Wars-esque situation implied by the older armor descriptions for Halo Online. There was this story being told of major corporations buying up production contracts and producing all these unregulated technologies. Some of the Halo 5 armors even expand on this, implying that private companies were influencing the UEG government and trying to produce their own augmented security and even private armies. That's something I may have to touch on one day, but we'll get there when we get there. For today, what was your favorite armor ability in Halo 4? And how about tactical package slash support upgrade combo? For me, my defaults were usually Thruster, Mobility, and Dexterity, though when the Champions Bundle came out, I had something of a pure defense build with Regen, Shielding, and Recharge. I remember having fun with that in War Games. Speaking of, 343, tell me you're gonna bring the Champions Bundle material over soon. It's a crime that that material hasn't been ported to MCC, especially with how much new material is being added each season. But anyway, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Special thanks to our theoretical patrons. If you'd like to see your name here or get a direct shout out, check out patreon.com slash Halo Cannon. You can simply support the channel or get additional benefits, such as behind the scenes materials and shout outs like this. However, your continued viewership is more than enough for me. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. If you really enjoy this, turn on that notification bell so you can be among the first to see new videos when they release. But for all my fellow Canaanites, keep on being awesome.